In this lesson, we're gonna talk about next steps for mentors. Hopefully by now, you've been through mentor training and you're ready to move forward. We finally convince you that you can do it, that it'll revolutionize your world, it'll be good for you, it'll be good for everyone else, but how would you actually do it? What should you do next? What are some of the steps you should take to get practical and actually start doing this? Here's the first thing you need to know. Be sure to formalize your role as a mentor for one or more people. Remember a couple lessons back, we talked about how you have to see mentoring as a thing. Well, the person you're gonna mentor has to see mentoring as a thing as well. You have to formalize the role. Now, if you have a pastor or a mentor or a leader, they can help you with that. In fact, box B in today's lesson will help you with some real practical steps for that as well. But be sure to formalize your role as a mentor. Find one or two or three people and say, listen, I wanna help you. I wanna mentor you, do you accept? And then you can really move forward. It'll be really good for you because it'll give you sort of equity with them. It'll make it clear for you and for them, and then you can move forward in confidence. Okay, so then you're gonna to wanna to start by sending the link to a topic page. Go online, find a topic that you think would be good for you and them, and then challenge them to complete box A on the guide, even before your first meeting. See, what this will do is it'll give great structure, some simple structure and organization to your first meeting. That first meeting's probably the most important because you'll be most nervous about that, and that'll give a chance for the person you're mentoring or the small group of people you're mentoring an opportunity to see that you know what you're doing, that you've thought this through, that you have a plan. And it'll also make that first meeting a lot easier for you. You know, start by going over box A, um, listening to why they picked which article, which video. It'll give you some insight to what their needs are. And, and use box B to just kind of have sort of icebreaker conversation about that topic. And once you do that, you'll be ready to move on after that first meeting to the subsequent meetings. Now for those next meetings, you can let them choose another topic or maybe they wanna stay on that topic you started with or maybe they're ready for a series for the next time, for the upcoming weeks. Now if you spend some time looking at the resources, you should know that topics are broader, they're more open-ended and series are more specific. So a series might be three or four weeks on a specific topic, so bear that in mind. Series are really good eventually to get to, but topics are also really good to sort of begin exploring a topic. And again, all of this is designed to help you to help someone else talk about truth, discover it, process it so that they can really begin living it out. And don't forget, all roads lead to foundations. Make sure you know that foundation series, make sure that you've taken it yourself, and make sure the person you're mentoring, at some point, you should be sure to take that person through foundations. Now, they might not be ready in the first week or month, but eventually, if they've never taken it, make sure you bring them through foundations because those are the three basic truths for their pursuit of God. You know, you can help them with uh, an addiction that they have or with some question they have. You can help them with that all day long. But if at the end of the day, or at the end of the month or year or whatever, however long it takes for you to help them and mentor them, if at the end of that, you don't help them to pursue God, you really haven't done the best thing you can do for them. You know, those three truths of foundations are, we start by trusting Jesus. Make sure that they've trusted Jesus for their salvation. And number two, that once we're Christians, we live to honor God. That's what you're trying to help them to do. Not just to live a moral lifestyle, but to honor God because they wanna please God and do it for him and for his sake and for his glory. And that third thing is to ma we mature by helping other people. So ultimately, when you bring them through foundations, that's where they'll learn for the first time that they can do for someone else what you're doing for them. So it'll really help this whole thing go full circle. Now, one last thing, when they're ready to move forward without you, connect them to a small group. Now, maybe they're already in a small group, maybe that's how you know them and that's fine, but if they're not in a small group, you have to connect them to one because it's important for them to learn to have connections with other believers that can help them as well. Don't forget, you're not gonna mentor them forever. Remember, Jesus mentored his disciples for three years and then he left. You, you might mentor someone for a couple of months, for a couple of years, whatever that takes, but at some point, you need to connect them with others who can help them because you've got other people to help as well, and so do they. So use that workbook and talk with your mentor or small group about these practical next steps for mentoring.